How many times have you been on social media and seen one of those flat earth memes shared by someone who thinks it's just an automatic win? Yeah, me too. Well, worry not people, because in this brand new series of videos, I'll be breaking these flat earth memes down so much so that you can debunk them with just a single share of this video. Welcome to Debunking Flat Earth Memes. Hello everyone and welcome along to this first episode of Debunking Flat Earth Memes with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. This is a brand new type of video and will be released every other Wednesday. And we'll be looking at a different Flat Earth meme each time. But before we begin with today's uh, meme, I want to say a quick thank you to the sponsors of this video today, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs and businesses to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time. All in one place, all on your terms. Now I've been using it to set up a little Run Man Dan website and the next generation website design system from Squarespace Fluid Engine means it's never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. You can start with a best-in-class website template and customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. Now I'm an ultra trail runner, I love the outdoors and being in and around it, so this nature template was perfect for the website. I was able to customize this look a bit, update the content and add features to fit my unique needs. Now you can make any Squarespace template do what you want. So your idea, brand or business stands out online on any device. And Squarespace has some powerful blogging tools too to share stories, photos, videos, and updates. And you can categorize, share, and schedule your posts to make your content work for you. And as you can see, I've started my race reports on the races section of the Run Man Dan website. Now I've just got started, but I'm loving the creative process of it already, and I can't wait till it's finished. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash simandan to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Right, back to today's video, which is the first in a new series of debunking videos looking at flat earth memes specifically. Now, these are gonna be a bit different to the normal types of videos that I make. We are gonna break each meme down to within an inch of its life, just to prove it wrong, and we're gonna start with this one here. What a beauty it is, how many times have you seen this one or variation of it, loads, I bet. Well, let's go through this one properly and show exactly why it's wrong. Okay, let's just take it at face value first and straight away we can see some issues. The idea of this meme is that when we are on roundabouts and roller coasters moving at speeds less than the Earth's rotation, we feel all this motion, yet here on Earth they're saying we feel none despite moving at 1,675 kilometers per hour. Now the flurfers love to post this one, don't they, when it comes to a discussion about Earth's rotation. Well, to start, I'm gonna highlight the glaring issues and then we'll look into the actual maths of it all. Now let's start with the roundabout. Now I think that 10 kilometers an hour is quite conservative, but we'll go with the flat earthers on this one. Okay, now we've confirmed that one, let's move on to the roller coaster. Now to be frank, it's pretty silly to include it in this meme in the first place. Okay, flat earthers want to make a point about the Earth's rotation, but you measure rotation in angular velocity, not linear speed. More of that in a bit. So why would you include this? Okay, roller coasters do go around bends, so maybe for that reason. Okay, well let's take my favorite roller coaster here in the UK, the Saw Ride in Thorpe Park. Now that's got a top speed of 86 kilometers per hour, so that meme is actually not far off. Great, now we've got all of our figures, let's do some maths. To start with, we are gonna work out the angular velocity of all three things in motion, because that is how we measure something in circular motion. But first, a little bit of circular motion theory. Let's start with something that's pretty basic in physics, velocity or speed. We know that speed is distance divided by time. So when we refer to the linear speeds in the meme, we are going to utilize that equation. If we take a point on a circle, if we know the distance and the time taken, we can figure out the velocity. So how can we easily infer a distance? Well, if the point travels once around its circle, 
and we know the equation of circumference of a circle to be 2 pi r, then we can call 2 pi r our distance. And it takes a specific time, t, to do that full circle. So we can say with confidence then that v, or velocity, is 2 pi r divided by t. And that will be in meters per second. But as I mentioned before, we do not measure circular motion in meters per second. We actually measure it in radians per second. But what is a radian, you may be asking? Well, first off, let's just look at what angular velocity is. Angular velocity is the change in angle with respect to time. So you may have heard me say on the channel before that Earth rotates 15 degrees per hour. Now that's your angle change in a given time. And degrees per hour is one way to figure it out, but we should really be using radians per second. So radians are the standard unit to measure an angle, and one radian is the angle created at the center of a circle where the radius is equal to the arc length here. So the angle in radians can be figured out as the distance of the arc, let's call this x, divided by the radius. Right, now, how many radians are there then in a full circle? Well, we know that a full circle has 360 degrees. If we go back to our radian equation here, we know that the entire 360 degrees, if that was our arc, so to speak, we would then place 2 pi r at the top here, because the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r and we divide by r to get our angle of the entire circle in radians. So with this little equation, the r's cancel out and that leaves us two pi. So we can say that there are two pi radians in an entire circle. And as I said, we need to measure the angular velocity of these objects in radians per second. So omega, which is our symbol for angular velocity, is the change in angle over time, which for a full circle would be two pi radians, and we divide that by the time taken t. But you might notice a relationship here between angular and linear velocity. Omega is two pi over t, and velocity is two pi r over t. Now that means we can say that v is omega multiplied by r. And if we arrange that, we can say that omega is the linear velocity divided by the radius, or r. So with all that out of the way, let's figure out the angular velocity of our three objects, shall we? We'll start with our roundabout. I think it's fair to say that the radius is one meter. And we can convert the kilometers per hour to meters per second, which means that we have an equation of 2.78 meters per second divided by one meter, which is, of course, 2.78 radians per second. Or, for the OGs among us, 573,416 degrees per hour. Let's move on to the roller coaster, which would be when it's turning a corner, let's remember. That has an angular speed of 23.89 meters per second. And we divide that by, well, it's difficult to get a radius here, but if we imagine the curve is part of a full circle, we can estimate a radius of around 10 meters, depending on the roller coaster, of course. And for that, we get an angular speed of 2.39 radians per second, or 492,972 degrees per hour. And finally, the Earth, which it has a linear speed at the equator, let's remember, of 465.28 meters per second. And the radius at the equator is 6,371,000 meters, which gives us an angular speed of 0.0000733 radians per second, or, as we all know, 15 degrees per hour. Quite a conclusive result there, and as we can see, the Earth's angular velocity is a lot slower than that of the roundabout or the roller coaster. But that's not the end of it, because we don't actually feel that angular velocity, because it's constant. And it's not the angular velocity that we're really feeling on the roundabout or the roller coaster either. It's the centripetal acceleration. And for that, we can use the formula radius multiplied by omega squared. Now let's start with the roundabout as before. So we know the radius is one and the angular velocity is 2.78 radians per second. Now if we multiply one by the square, we get 7.73 meters per second squared. 
So that's quite close to the acceleration caused by gravity on the Earth's surface. Let's move on to the roller coaster. Now for that, we've got a radius of 10 meters and an angular velocity of 2.39 radians per second. So by squaring that and multiplying it by 10, we get 57.12 meters per second squared. And finally, the Earth. Let's take our angular speed of 0.00007303, square it and then multiply it by 6,371,000 and we get 0.34 meters per second squared of centripetal acceleration. That is why we can feel the acceleration on a roundabout and a roller coaster, but not the Earth. 0.34 meters per second makes hardly any difference at all to the acceleration we feel from gravity. Well, I think that's comprehensively put that meme to bed, hasn't it? Let me know what you think in the comments and whether or not you like this new format. The next one will be out in two weeks. Thanks so much for watching today. We're all done and dusted for this one. I do appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that thumbs up button too. Just now time to once again thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Remember, after your free trial, head to squarespace.com slash simandan to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I've been Simon and Dan. Have yourselves a fantastic couple of days and I'll see you on Friday where we'll be looking at Witsit Gets It and he's actually talking about Earth's motion. So I'll see you then.